I think they're going to be more in, there's going to be more integration into Sony, more people leaving that team to go into other teams within Sony, whether it's this new one that up to 75 people, maybe there's some kind of kill zone thing. I know Copium. Every single time we talk about like Sony having to close studios or restructure, Talon's always like, you know, they could work on a kill zone. I'm, I'm just saying. That's why I said Copium, dude. That's why copium. I said it. <laughs> He's like, I'm just saying, it could be, just you saying. know, you could work on a I'm new I'm sorry, Killzone. I loved Killzone 2 and Killzone 3 online. Lemon was there with me from the day one. He yeah. knows what I'm talking about. It's official. Bungie's dead. Wrap it up. It's all done. They have officially gone into Sony. Kind of. What do you mean by that? Let's talk about this, shall we? What's going on, guys? Talon here from Direct Gaming. And uh, if you haven't been online in the last 24 hours, then uh, you might have seen that Bungie's laying off more people. Yay, more layoffs. It's always happening around this time right now. And especially 2024 has been absolutely ridiculous when it comes to layoffs. But we already know this is all due to what happened over the last few years. And now we're all paying for it, especially developers. But unfortunately, the big wigs are not and once again bungie is in the shooting range here and everyone's just like what the f bungie because if you didn't know they have laid off over i believe 15 percent of their team essentially according to jason schreier right here sony's bungie is shrinking from 1300 people to 850 220 people as of today which is the first of august in japan or aka july 31st over in the states at the time this happened 220 people were laid off, 155 people are moving over to Sony, aka they're basically integrating some of those, not, not the 220, from what I understand, 220 people are just laid off, they're gone. Then another 155 people are moving into Sony, and then it says here that up to 75 people are being brought in for some kind of new studio thing, because apparently they're working on some kind of new fantasy action adventure game from what I understand. I'm not 100% sure on some of those particular topics because that sounds like pre, pre, pre early development essentially, but it, it's not looking good essentially. And the obviously Jason Schreier here does have a quote where he says, we were overly ambitious. Our financial safety margins were exceeded and we began running in the red. It says CEO Pete Harrison's, if I'm pronouncing that right, I don't give two shits because people are giving him a shit ton of crap online right now. And funny enough, his uh, Twitter is actually private right now because uh, I guess he bought too many cars with all that nice Sony money and everything like that. So let's take a look right here, though, as of the official, this is the official Bungie article. This is on their website, as you can see right here in front of me right now. Uh, it is not looking the greatest. And actually, I just realized before I do anything, I need to actually show this. Coming from the official Bungie news article right here. This, this is their official website. This is no news article. This is no nothing. This is their official thing from Pete Persons himself. He basically states, this morning, I'll share with you some of the most difficult changes we've ever had to make as a studio. As I'm rolling my eyes right now at him saying this, it's obviously difficult for all the developers and my heart goes out to every single one who's affected by this. But he himself, nah, I don't give two shits about him. But anyway, I continue on saying, I'm sharing with you some of the most difficult changes we ever had to make as a studio due to rising costs of development and industry shifts, as well as enduring economic conditions. It's become clear that we need to make substantial changes to our core, to our cost structure and focus development efforts entirely on Destiny and Marathon. Who could have seen this coming? So I guess that Gummy Bears game is officially dead, whatever the F that game was. That means beginning today, 220 of our roles will be eliminated representing roughly 17% of our studio's workforce. I wonder how that's going to affect that nice little bungee place that they were building a couple years ago over in Seattle. I wonder how that's going for them right now. These actions will affect every level of the company, including most of our executive and senior leader roles. I'll get into why that's half true and probably half not true. Uh, today is a difficult and painful day, especially for our de departing colleagues, uh, all of which have made important and valuable contributions to Bungie. Our goal is to support them with the utmost care and respect for everyone affected by this job reduction. We will be offering a generous exit package, including severance, bonus, and health coverage. Now, we'll get into the rest of this article right here, but in this right here, this is actually going way back to stuff that we covered, I believe, back in February of this year, where we saw that the final shape was delayed. It might have been a little bit earlier. It might have been like late, late 2023. But regardless, when Final Shape was delayed and everything like that, they had a bunch of layoffs over at Bungie as well, and nothing was happening to the higher ups and everything. And everyone that was being laid off at Bungie was calling them out online and everything like that. And basically, there was news coming out saying that if Bungie was not able to hit certain numbers because they were 
missing marks by like 45% when it came to revenue and everything, that Sony was going to step in and be like, nope, you're done. You're We're handling this now. Like, you are out of here, essentially. So when I see that, you know, Pete here says that this is, you know, affecting every level, including most of our executive and senior leader roles, part of me says, yeah, it's probably true. Sony's basically come in and been like, yeah, no, you're out, dude. Or, you know, we're handling this now. Step aside, young blood. That's essentially what's going on here. But it is just... When I saw this today, I was just like, are you kidding me with this right now? And I mean, we've been seeing tweets all day about ex, well, ex employees now and everything. I mean, this one kind of broke my heart. Essentially, there is someone named Kelly Bean here. Shout out to her. Try to show as much support as we can for developers and everything. But she says, I've been impacted by the layoffs announcing this morning. It's been a privilege working for everyone at Bungie for the almost five years, but it's just really bad timing because my maternity leave was supposed to start next Monday and I got laid off today. Like, by the way, none of her fault or anything like this, but I bet this was absolutely planned because uh, she was probably going on maternity leave. I would not be surprised if that's the reason that she was one of the layoffs. Obviously, a lot of people lost their jobs, and I'm not trying to say that that's the only reason, but I would not be surprised that that was definitely part of it right there. That is, uh, God, that is, that's absolutely terrible to basically have a job for a long time there doing really well you're about to go on maternity leave and then you get laid off because bungie basically from what i can understand fudged numbers when sony tried to acquire them and everything like that which i'm going to get into a little bit because i think a lot of it has to deal with how jim ryan handled anything but joining me today as always is a little bobby and our guest is always lemon i want to know your guys thoughts on this uh bobby i know you've had some pent-up rage with this especially with this announcing today what are your personal thoughts on this? Yeah, I I just think that this shit is ridiculous. But like Bungie, we've talked about Bungie a lot because we're, we're me and Talon are huge Destiny fans, and I know Lemon used to play Destiny. Like me and Talon still play Destiny pretty pretty actively. I mean, I'm I'm a little more in and out than I used to be, but I'm definitely more. In like and I out love now. that. Yeah, I love the franchise. I like it's one of my favorite game franchises of all time. Like I would say it's up there with like Mario and Zelda as one of my favorite franchises of games and and like Halo, you know, another Bungie one, as one of my favorite franchises of games of all time. At the same time, like I know exactly what these people feel like because this is exactly what happened uh, when I was at EA. Like, I remember this is one of the things that pissed me off was reading about uh, Pete Parsons and his fucking cars. Because I remember not too long before we got laid off at EA back when I worked there, seeing Peter Moore park his, you know, his brand new Aston Martin down in his special spot, the parking garage at EA. Like he had like a brand new Aston Martin, a couple hundred thousand dollars for that car, just chilling in, in the parking garage. And then, you know, like two weeks later, we lose our jobs. So I know, ex I literally know exactly how these people feel. Um, it's, it's horrible. And for me, it, you know, like I never, went back into games maybe but i mean now i don't want to why would i want to now why would anybody want to be in games now you know yeah. bungie just had, you know we said it before it's been completely mismanaged the c-suite uh, in my opinion needs to just be completely gutted gutted it'd be like if you know the person i think who said that uh herman hulse is now in charge of bungie i, I think it was jeff grubb said it and jeff grubb tends to know what he's talking about you know, I give him like 85% on his, his accuracy. Very, very, you know, respectable in, in what he says. And he just said, yeah, Her Herman Hulse is in charge of Bungie now. And, you know, I assume that's why they folded people into SIE yep. and why, you know, they took off people who were, who had that dormant IP and spun them off into their own little new studio to make it happen. Uh, that actually, to me, is very exciting. Taking 75 very talented people, spinning them off into a small studio that can work with a budget that's under control, and getting a good game out is what Sony needs to be really focusing on. And kind of cutting that bloat of Bungie's executives would be a really good start with that. Yeah, Just like I, get them out, like yeah. get them out. For those of you who don't know, when Jim Ryan, the ex-CEO of PlayStation, stepped down uh it was it was taken over by two ceos now there are there's a ceo basically uh i believe he's here in japan i can blanking on his name at this particular moment uh but the other ceo 
used to be the head of uh, the makers of like Horizon, a uh, gorilla, essentially. He used to be the head of gorilla. And so, and then, so now he's been bumped up to one of the CEOs. So if now this is, hasn't officially been confirmed, I guess we should say when it comes to, you know, him being the head of Bungie now, essentially, but I, uh, I would believe it. I absolutely would 100% believe it simply just due to the fact that they, this, this has been reported that if Bungie couldn't get things under control, Sony was going to step in and guess what? They've stepped in now, essentially, right? They're just like, nope. And even like this little post that we have up here on screen right now, uh, an ex-employee of Bungie who was laid off calls on Bungie CEO Pete to step down, also says he's a liar and a thief and claims that it isn't on Sony, but Bungie leadership. This is the exact same thing that we heard back in the last round of layoffs with Bungie and everything. Everyone was like, no, this isn't on Sony slash PlayStation. This is on Bungie leadership and everything. Pete also supposedly bought a whopping 24 vehicles from a single auction site since the acquisition closed in July 2022, aka when Sony bought them, uh, totaling $2 million in costs, uh, presumably part funded by what uh, refer what they refer to as the giant Sony payouts, which again, whatever, he's a CEO, we know he's got tons of money now. CEOs always do this, they go off and buy whatever. But uh, Pete's been getting some blowback online and he even privatized his Twitter account today, like we said beforehand. So, well, I'm not surprised that CEOs go out and buy huge luxurious things, you know, the yachts, the planes, the whatever, essentially. Um, it does, it's not a good look when you are constantly, you've, this is your second round of layoffs in less than six months, give or take. And yeah. you're going out and buying multi, you know, tons of cars and everything. And at the same time, you're laying all these people off and everything. Not, not to be fair, but to, I guess, understand how some of this stuff works. So, however, though, when corporate stuff happens and people are bought out and stocks and shares and all that stuff, technically, a lot of this stuff, like, they don't actually have the cash on hand. Just simply say, yeah, cut this CEO's pay, you know, and then you can just keep everyone else. Most of their pay is in stocks and shares and everything. It's not actual flush cash and everything which people I need to understand. I'm not trying to defend it. I'm not saying I absolutely think he still needs to go and everything, but just even if they let him go, which hopefully they do, that's not going to save everyone's jobs, unfortunately, because there's not that flush cash there, essentially, um, which is what a lot of people get when they work at a company, right? Like when I work my job, I get physical cash and everything. I'm not getting stocks in the company that hired me and everything like that, right? So some companies do that, obviously, but not all of them, per se. So just kind of understand that simply just by... Yeah, cut one this one executive over here and you can save all these jobs unfortunately that's not the case and it even you know it shows as they as he stated here in this thing that they've been in the red they have been in the red for quite some time so that that should be telling right there i think is, is what i should say um but lemon what are your personal thoughts on all this first his p parsons money might be typing the stocks but most C-level people also have golden parachutes. Just look at Bobby Kotick. Oh, yeah. No, they do. He could, yeah, he, do. He could yeah. have shot someone in the middle of Activision Studios yep. and not necessarily arrested, but ignoring that part, he would still get his golden parachute. Nothing would happen. I guarantee Pete Parsons has the same thing. I don't know. This seems like business as usual to me. I think that Herman Holst coming into this screams that Sony's finally kind of cracking the whip, but... I think this is also on Sony and their leadership um, at the time when they bought Bungie. I feel like this was kind of an open secret, like that Bungie was kind of burning cash and just kind of not well run. A lot of that, I, and, and my little tinfoil hat for something like that is I think it's on Jim Ryan because Jim Ryan tried to come in and buy, like, buy a bunch of things, you know, little companies and everything like that. Tried to get all these live service stuff and then the heads of Sony are just like, what the F are you doing with our money? <laughs> and now they're coming in trying to play cleanup, essentially, uh, yeah. is the way I so, look at it. I'm glad you brought up tinfoil hat because I love a good tinfoil hat theory. Love them. And the timing of this is super juicy. Yeah. Because what open beta just happened recently? Concord. Hmm, now, what? As so I looking at like, the hell's going on? This isn't doing well. Helldivers did well. Yep. Bungie is just literally in free fall burning money. Destiny's kind of wrapping up. Marathon, what? Oh man, Marathon, what? That, that, that's not, that might not be so hot. That might be another Concord. The timing is perfect for this. Herman Hulse coming into this is, to me, this looks like straight up, their bungee's collapsing right here now. 
like they, there might be a skeleton crew for for keeping destiny alive to to really squeeze out really ring out what little money is left in in destiny but i think we're done with destiny at this point um this is just kind there. of what just kind think? of squashing the rest of what's left of bungie um i fully expect it to be either squashed or renamed to sie i don't know Seattle, I, Bellevue, whatever. I, I I actually disagree with that. I think that Bungie, for the devoted Destiny player base, even with all the content creators and streamers and stuff that you see now, all of them right now are bailing on Destiny 2 because, and this is very smart on a lot of these people's thing, is because Bungie's just going like, oh yeah, we're not going to tell you what we're doing with Destiny right now. Yeah. So like, if you're a content creator, you make your living off of it right like think of Datto or as to cross those big destiny content creators those guys right now got to be going like oh i better figure out a way to pivot to something because yep. gotta be able to pivot to something I, else yep. yeah i can't depend on this because they're not giving us anything that's fair but the second the second that bungie goes oh by the way destiny 3 releases you know fall 2025 it, it starts all over like there's something about destiny that it just it captures so many people i mean it could be like some people love the lore you know some people love just like pvp or raids or like you know but i mean they think they said like it's something something stupid like 30 percent of the player base just goes and does patrol they log in yeah they log in and they go do some like public events and like some bounties on a planet and get a couple guns and a couple pieces of armor and they have some fun shooting aliens and that's that's it like imagine fortnite you were just like yeah fortnite just land and like kill those robot bots that they put in at whatever site and that's like all i do you know what i mean like no other game gets away with that the way that destiny does somehow uh somehow and and it's just because like people love how the game plays there's nothing nothing that plays like destiny would you agree with that talon i honestly would and again and, and i've said this multiple times we said this back when we did our little halo coverage a couple weeks ago if i remember correctly um of the whole 343 and halo and all that stuff go check it out It'll be in the top right corner but basically i said look there's a reason that people love a game like halo or bungie's uh destiny and everything because of how the shooting mechanics is lemon here trashes on destiny half the time these days but he can't deny that to shoot you know the actual feeling of shooting your weapon in the game it feels good right yeah but so is halo infinite right I exactly mean, right but we can't I'm... take living too seriously he plays the finals man hey <laughs> hey, uh, hey, uh, hey. <laughs> hey knock it off bobby don't make me come over there honestly i also think destiny has the uh benefit of being one of these type of first games out right if destiny if, yeah. the, if the first destiny like the very first one was to release in like 2022 2023 it would not be nowhere near as successful. It just wouldn't. Right? Yeah. I It'd mean, be the I, same thing I, with like Concord and Overwatch and whatever that, you know, all that stuff, right? It's always timing and, and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, John in the chat does say, just play Warframe, guys. And I, I tried Warframe. <laughs> um, Warframe is, cool. Warframe is great. Cool Destiny. Yeah, yeah, Warframe is great, but like, it's not Destiny. It's and it's not the same, fun, you can say the same thing as, as <laughs> you can say the same thing with, with Destiny, right? Destiny's great, but it's not Warframe. If you want to play that, right? like if you want to play that experience, you're not getting that from another game. Like you don't, you like, I'm playing the first Descendant right now. That game is very similar in feel to Warframe, in my opinion, but it ain't Warframe. Right, and it's the same thing with Destiny. Like I play tons of other looters, tons of other stuff. They ain't Destiny, right? No. Uh, same thing with like, and, and you know, we were talking earlier, like about how many hours I put into Anthem. There is nothing that get gets my like gets that itch of Anthem out for me because nothing plays like Anthem. You know what There's I mean? Just everything like, else within that game that unfortunately was just so bad. Yeah. But now man, I, I played it a lot. Right. And I want to read something here real quick because I did find this interesting and I want to hear his personal thoughts on this in chat. Let me know your thoughts as well. Continuing on in that article that we talked about that Pete, aka the CEO of Bungie said, uh, I realize all this is hard news, especially following the success that we've seen in the final shape. But as we've navigated the border economic realities over the last year and after exhausting all other mitigation options, this has become a necessary decision to refocus our studio and our business with more realistic goals and viable financials. Yeah, 
Um, I, there's still some more I want to read, but just that first sentence right there. What does that say when you have a huge success like DLC does the final shape and then you lay all these people off, right? And you're, you're still not hitting your heavy. numbers and everything, right? Like you're, that's just... You're, you're, that's, whatever management you're doing yeah, is Whatever, whatever shit, management yeah, you like have going, dog. you need them out. And they are a cancer right now, essentially. Whatever the management higher up positions are, you need to get them out right there. Because all the developers, they did an amazing job with the final shape, right? I have easily had my problems with Destiny. I have criticized it a lot, even though I've played a shit ton of it. But there's no denying that there was a lot of love and passion. And the final shape itself was a very well-made expansion. Very well-made. Absolutely no doubt. Oh, all the developers, yes. round of applause the entire... If, if I could somehow give you a ton of money to make sure you don't have to work ever again or you can make your own you know studio or whatever i would but unfortunately i can't unless like 10 billion of you hit that subscribe button right now by all means go ahead <laughs> but continue on in this little article right here though we are committing to two major changes today that we believe will help support our focus uh leverage sony's strength to create new opportunities for bungie talent first we are deepening our integration with Sony Interactive Entertainment, aka SIE, working to integrate 155 roles, roughly 12% into SIE over the next few quarters. SIE worked tirelessly with us to identify roles uh, for as many of our people as possible, enabling us uh, together to save a great deal of talent that would have otherwise been affected by the reduction in force. So aka those 220 jobs that were lost today, it could have been more. It could have been more yeah, if Sony that, didn't step that, in. Mm -hmm. That's one of those things that I liked reading because, I mean, we've seen, you know, there's obviously always going to be the console warriors, right? Who right. go, well, as soon as, you know, Destiny 2 is great, and as soon as Sony bottoms just crash and burn, it's like, no, 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 no. Like, it's the same thing that has always happened with Bungie. They just burn too much cash because their manage like i feel like they just overcompensate their management this isn't no this is nothing new for bungie we've seen this back in the day when they broke off from xbox and everything and then they got picked up by activision and yep. then activision was like okay what the f is going on here then they broke away from activision and now bungie's in the same loop and it's like and it's it especially is telling when all these developers are on their social media pages right now saying no this isn't on sony this is on manager and this yep. is not the first time they're saying it they said it back in the last round of layoffs yeah and, it's just and, like, and yeah like sony right now is the saving grace for like what 150 people yeah 150 uh, they, you know and again sony has their problems they have their issues there's there's a ton mm -hmm. of stuff that they have done that you know we've called out here on the channel multiple times beforehand but luckily 150 people are not jobless today yeah that's one of the things that is uh is very good to see because you know, working with them to really go, okay, hey, you got a lot of talented people. We gave you money to retain that talent that disappeared somewhere, but we're going to bust our ass to make sure we can get a bunch of these people into their own studio and a bunch into SIE studios to make sure that we don't just lose this really great talent. I would not be surprised in the next year if Bungie is fully integrated into Sony and, you know, developers all over the place, you know, working as so they can actually do work and everything like that i would not be surprised because generally when it comes to acquisitions and everything like that bungie was in a very unique position where they were still allowed to work on their own like they were under sony but they were able to work on whatever they wanted to essentially and they could still post their games wherever they wanted to post them that's not happening anymore uh, as far as i'm concerned i bet in the next year or so they are fully under Sony and whatever, you know, like Marathon will mostly go out into every platform still, but after that, everything else is going under Sony and PC essentially.